We have multiple store grocery haul for you today. Dollar Tree, Walmart, and BJ's, which is like a Costco's if you are new. This is an upstate New York grocery prices. We got a case of the Nesquik at BJ's. A case of the cereal, also BJ's. From Walmart, we picked up their packages of chicken wings, the four pound bag, and it's cheaper to buy two of the four pound bags than it is to buy their eight pound bag. Walmart, we got a bunch of bananas, a Bob Evans, also Walmart, a shake and bake, and their delicious bakery bread. Then from the Dollar Tree, we picked up nine pack of the Cheddar Classic Crackers, Cheese Delicious, a little bag of mini Oreos, some peanuts, these bakery style pretzels, another bag of the mini Oreos, three cans of the Kreider chicken, and peach cups. Those are for my tween for their lunch box snacks. Then from BJ's, we also picked up a whole chicken, pork chops, and steaks. We're getting low on some of our meats. Then over at Walmart, I've got the high energy soot and wild high energy soot for my birds. My gerbil likes the nut and berry combination, does not like gerbil food, but eats the same as the cardinal and the chickadee. Then we picked up a big bag of the peanuts from my Blue Jay, five pound bag of potatoes from Russet, and a three pound bag of onions at BJ's, which is also better to buy two three pound bags compared to the bigger size. That is odd how they do that. I'm going to go over to each of the prices for all the items. Then we're going to decant some of the packages and put these into individual baggies for different meals throughout the month. The whole chicken is going to go into the refrigerator for tomorrow. We're going to decan the chocolate milk. The cereal is going to stay in its case until we open it because I still have some of the other left. And I'm going to put away the Dollar Tree stuff so it doesn't disappear before Monday. And the wings are going to stay in its bag and go into my freezer behind me. Then we also break apart the bananas and not keep them in the bunch because they last up to a week longer than if you keep them bunched. You can also put cellophane around the edge if you don't want to break them apart. That is what it looks like. I have two separate receipts from Walmart. My bird food, $24.92 for the big 20 pound bag, and that's going to last a long time. And the birds really prefer to have the mixture with the peanuts. Then I got the special soot for the woodpecker and the nuthatch and the chickadee. And those were $1.68 and $1.18. And the cheaper one for the woodpecker was $1.18. Then we picked up a Italian sliced bread for a buck. They lowered it from $1.10. We got uh, Bob Evans for $3.64, still the same price. Coating mix, still the same price at $3.26. The bananas were $1.63 for the bunch. The chicken wings were $14.24, much better price than the Tyson's at your bulk store, and my husband prefers great value over the name brand. And we spent $23.67 on the food items. For the bird items, we spent $30. For BJ's, the pork chops were $8.51. The strip steaks were $31.97. We're going to have two tonight and separate the, uh, them out and have the other put in baggies for another weekend. The oven stuffer, which is for tomorrow, that was $9.12. And that is a great buy. It is Purdue and it also pops from the top, the timer. The kid a triple pack cereal was $6.99. That is like the best price on the market for cereal that's larger than family size. It is at BJ's in my part of New York. You get that much cereal for seven bucks, and it's been that price for a very long time. And there was a coupon available with it for a dollar fifty off. Then the onions were two twenty nine, which was a great buy. The peanuts were five ninety nine. That is a, a five pound bag. The next quick was nine eighty nine. That has been that price for a long time, and also had two dollars off. So that was an incredible buy. Then my husband treated himself to some Stella. He works really hard, so that was twenty eight ninety nine. And we spent $104.74. 
and we saved $18.85 and no coupons at Walmart and uh, no coupons at the Dollar Tree. And if you didn't know, Dollar Tree does take coupons. Now we're going to get some things decanned and then I will show you the meal idea for the next week and a half. I'm going to open up the steaks here. I'm going to keep two for tonight. I'm going to set them aside. And then two are going to go into a Ziploc bag. And you can use a Sharpie to write on it. Always make sure your hands are clean. And clean them in between bagging up your meats. Especially if you go from pork to beef to chicken. This is a great way to be budget friendly and frugal. And you can just push the air out and close it part way. Leave a little opening and flatten out all the air. And that's going to go in the freezer. This is going to get folded over and marinated for dinner. Let's separate out the porks. We'll probably do pork chops not next week, the week after, because we just had them. This week is going to be pork ribs. We like to do a pork night on Tuesdays or sometimes Thursday, depending on how busy we are. With activities winding down, they're not as busy as we've been. We have our art group every Thursday because it's really not school related. And then we have a jazz band in the morning. Cabaret is done. It's going to be one meal. And we usually serve it with baked potatoes or with some kind of vegetable. We like to do frozen broccoli frozen corn or fresh corn. Corn's going to slowly start coming into the supermarkets now that spring's here. I've seen it at Walmart's once already. After we package the meat, we're going to put it away. And then we're going to take apart the bananas and decan the case of chocolate milk. To help you be frugal and smart with your purchases. I used to be heavy into coupons and I used to do really well. I taught my husband everything he knows and he took over the reins in the house. Now the pork chops are all broken up into different meals. This is going to go into the middle of May towards the end of May, the pork meals. And we usually do two steaks at dinner time. My husband likes to have steak next day, like steak sandwich and such. I'm going to wash my hands. We're going to take care of the bananas. What I do is separate them. I've heard foil working with this too. Now when they get to this certain point, I put them in my bag of frozen bananas. Because I'll be making banana smoothies probably tomorrow with the kids. It's the last day of vacation here. And I put them in my little basket here. And then I have a shelf underneath my cabinet. I took it out of the fridge and put it back up here. Because it wasn't working in the fridge. A little under the shelf works best here. I've tried it in different places of the house. And that way the bananas aren't directly on the counter. And I keep that thermometer at reach there. This will go in the freezer with my bag of bananas. My spare freezer over here. Recently I broke up chicken. I broke up leftover ham. And now I'm going to put the pork up. Stay organized very long in here with my husband. I have all my fish and my meats and stuff from the Dollar Tree off to the side for quick heat meat nights. And we're gonna get the rest of the stuff put away and I gotta decan the chocolate milk. Let's go ahead and open up the chocolate milk and we're just gonna dump it into the bin here. 
I want all of the packaging is out of the house, and it doesn't look like a storeroom in here. This kind of got out of control, but that's okay. It's going to go on the very bottom shelf where nobody sees it. Having all that food in that little closet space that wasn't being used properly has been a savior. And I have little pockets set up to put all the lunch snacks away so they don't get eaten up before the weekend's over. Take a few minutes when you get home from the supermarket, get everything put away, then it's not out all the time, and keep an itemized list of your stock so you can rotate. So they drink them. They're up at the top here. They're buried at the bottom. And then when we go back to BJ's, if they want the you we'll grab another one. This is all we're going to do for decanting. And it's out of the way and it's done. Just by spending a few minutes with your purchases and decanting and rotating your stock, you keep your pantry healthy and your life's easy. Decan bird seed. I have these canisters because the gerbil prefers to eat this over gerbil food. Go all the way up. She loves the peanuts. And the now we're going to take the bucket for the bird food. Put it up on the table here. These are picked up at Walmarts. They're actually for dogs, but I use them for my birds. And we're going to dump it out into the canister. And I'll put the rest away if I want to get slow. They're going to be so happy to have this brand back. But the Walmart's brand has gotten really chintzy with too much corn. And they don't fill it up to the tippy top so my cups fit in. And I won't buy $10 scoops. I just save my McCafe cups because they're a dollar a drink at McDonald's. And this will give me the opportunity to wipe it down. And then you can just take a clip and you clip the bag so it stays fresh. The peanuts I didn't don't have to decan yet that are down here. The peanuts I don't have to decan yet because my bin is full. I just emptied out the bag yesterday and this will be emptied into the bin around Thursday. Now we're just gonna decan the, the onions and potatoes and we're done. Recently bought these at the Dollar Tree and I love them. And I wish I bought nine, because I haven't been able to find them since. If you see something you like, it is true to the word, you buy them then. Because you won't find them again. And if you do, it may be a long time. You put the potatoes at the top, because that's what you use most, and the onions at the bottom. Now everything has a spot. And I like to save these because I have skinny garbage cans that I can use Here's for a the menu board for the meals. Because we stocked up on chicken, pork, and beef with the steaks. I have ground beef, so I didn't need to buy that yet. Probably another week or so. So this is what it's going to look like. We switched around some things here. And we're having a whole chicken. And then we're going to have either chicken casserole or chicken soup. I haven't decided yet. We're not going to do the pork chops because we just had them last week, so we're going to do pork ribs. Every Wednesday is Italian night. If we're new, these are theme nights. Pork nights Tuesday. Wednesday is Italian night for spaghetti, meatballs, lasagna, whatever. Heat and eat on Thursday. That could be anything that's homemade, frozen, or a TV dinner. Then we do a pizza night where we order a pizza once in a while, or I make my homemade pizza crust from Bisquick, which I've done on the channel a couple of times in the Cook With Me players list. Or we have a frozen pizza available. Then we'd like to do steaks. And now we decided we're going to do steak tonight instead of a chuck roast. So we'll do the chuck roast the following Saturday. And then I have chicken in the freezer and packages separated out. I'll take one out next weekend for chicken strips for next Sunday. Anything left over, we'll make soup. 
or a casserole, depending on what it is, or even tacos. Then back to the pork night, which will be reversed to pork chops. Then Wednesday's Italian night, back to heat and eat night. And then I have a pork roast, so that, that particular week, we'll take that out, probably Wednesday, because it's really big. We're going to thaw it part way, cut it in half, put half back in the freezer. We're going to have the pork roast with a nice barbecue sauce, and then anything left over, we're going to have pork slider sandwiches, or you can do pork tacos, any kind of dish you want with the pork. That is the meal plan.